Digital is a very small word with lots of big meanings. I think it's an amazing area to be in at the moment and to apply our physical science knowledge to digital knowledge. One of the best things I think about digital technologies and using computers and thinking in this way is their ability to help us as humans, if you like, absorb the information that's available to us. When we talk about artificial intelligence in chemistry, we are talking about applying rules to help us understand what could happen if we do a particular reaction and try and anticipate what's going to happen next. One of the things I think we've learned is that careful consideration first about where you apply digital, whether it's AI, robotics, high throughput, pays big dividends. I think the biggest opportunities are to find reactions, materials and technologies that simply we wouldn't find without using these methods. We would like to automate some aspects of organic synthesis, but automating the whole of organic synthesis is incredibly difficult because of the vast complexity of organic structures. The reason that we're focused on this particular family of natural products is that they have been the most successful in terms of applications in human health. You can generate these enormous databases now of potential molecules that can be made. Now as a human, I can't hold that in my head. I might think I understand that, but there's just no way. But there's not a problem for a computer at all. So what you then need are tools and technologies in a computer that allow it to break it down or you to search it in a way that a human can get the information they want out of these things very, very quickly or very easily. When you're thinking about decarbonisation, surely we can apply our digital techniques to that big global challenge and think about how we get to the point we need to be at more quickly. So we built a robot specifically to look for new solar fuels catalysts and those systems can work nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week and they can really carry out very large numbers of experiments, perhaps 700 experiments in a week, whereas maybe a PhD student might carry out in some cases perhaps 700 experiments in a PhD. We're some way at the moment from totally autonomous science, which I would define as generating a hypothesis, doing experiments and then modifying that hypothesis. I think in the next 10 years or so, there will be a fusion of approaches. So I see these systems, computational and automation systems being used as tools by human scientists. If chemistry is going to be transformed by digital technologies, we need to train chemists to think differently. I think that chemists will definitely need to understand what programs can and can't do, which means some level of programming experience. I think they will also definitely need some level of basic statistics, and given their prominence in all of this, at least some understanding of machine learning and its limitations and potential. Longer term, we're partnering with academic institutions to grow physical scientists with good data science skills. I think it's absolutely critical for chemists to be open to the new technologies that are with us today. It can only enhance the science that they're doing. I've wanted digital technology and chemistry since I was like nine years old. So I guess what's happening now, some, you know, almost 36 years later, is my dream is coming true. It enables us to think differently when we're inventing. I think it will speed up innovation because it would enable us to use our experts in different ways. I don't think it will ever, ever get rid of the human being as the technical expert, but it will absolutely enable efficiencies. Just the fact that you increase your efficiency even by say 10% across a company, that's a huge gain and that really potentially is a game changer for your business.